Hey folks, let's talk about brachiectasis. Since we missed the lecture on brachiectasis, I thought I would just put one on YouTube for your benefit. I hope that helps. Uh, we'll start out with the definition of brachiectasis. You would call it chronic distortion, dilation and distortion of the bronchial wall. Not to be confused with emphysema, that's chronic dilation distortion of the air spaces, distal to the terminal bronchioles, different place. This is the bronchial wall being eaten away and, and uh, you've got necrotized tissue and basically um, the uh, tissue of the airways are being are de deteriorating and causing a big old sack of pus to form on the side of the airway. Well, the things we get to talk about is uh, things are, why does it happen? You know, what are the causes? And then what treatments are we gonna consider? So let's get started with, uh, and, and what forms it takes. So let's get started with what it looks like. We could see uh, sacs forming on the side of the airway, like I was saying, and once the sac forms on the side of the airway because of destruction of the air, airway's wall, then you're gonna have mucus gather there and stagnate. So these patients are gonna have terrible infections. And like uh, cystic fibrosis, bronchial hygiene is what it's all about when you're treating bronchiectasis. So the anatomic changes obviously are going to be uh, destruction of the bronchial wall and then sputum collection in those uh, in those spaces, excessive excessive amounts of mucus, and then eventually alveolar hyperinflation. But you can like like with cystic fibrosis, you could have patients who have mucus plugging and and atelectasis, but I want you to think of bronchiectasis as an obstructive disease and that's the form you're going to see it in most, most often. So again, the anatomic alterations kind of uh, lead you toward what treatments are going to be you know, indicated, which are basically the, the, uh, the list of high, bronchial hygiene therapies that we, that we discussed. Now you all remember with bronchial hygiene, you're going to do the easiest, most efficient thing first. I know you like to bronch the patient, but let's, let's ask them to cough. Hydration, coughing, deep breathing, so forth. This would be an ideal patient to have flutter valve therapy, chest physical therapy, things like that. So. I don't know who you are. All right, so we're going to not worry about the restrictive forms of bronchiectasis much. Three forms of bronchiectasis, you're going to look in the book and you're going to see the saccular, fusiform, all kinds of different types. Don't worry too much about this. I, you need to know the forms, but I'm not going to ask you really specific questions about the forms. Uh, the test question would say something like, you know, which of the following is a form of bronchiectasis? And I would say, is it intrinsic, fusiform, or panlobular? So, you know, the other two refer to another disease, so you're going to be able to pick through that pretty easily. Don't worry about knowing specifics about each one. Now, what we're going to see, one of the things you want to do is say, well, if, there's going to, if they're going to do bronchography or a bronchogram, that's a test where the patient inhales a contrast and it outlines the bronchial airways. So this is not to be confused with air bronchogram, which is a finding on a chest x-ray for pneumonia or consolidation. That's two different things. Air bronchogram is a finding and the term bronchogram is actually a, a procedure, a test that they do to find bronchiectasis. I don't think, I think this is probably old, te old technology. And now we're gonna look at uh, more likely seeing uh, 
high resolution CT scan. And then on the CT scan, you're going to see those sac formations on the bronchi. But there's a picture of saccular bronchiectasis, and you can see the the uh, deposits of the, the contrast down in those sacs that are formed on the bronchi. All right, so here's something you're going to need to do. You, you got to be able to differentiate what are acquired forms of bronchiectasis versus congenital. And this is all in your handout in the uh, clearly outlined in the handout. Well, acquired, obviously they didn't have it before and then something happened and they got it. The main, the main ones here are going to be pul recurrent pulmonary infections and airway obstructions and things like that, but it also includes TB. Now TB is a, is a uh, tuberculosis is a organism that can actually eat away at the side of the airway so it can destroy it that way. Then you have the, the congenital defects. Uh, the main one here, you would want to read about Cartagena syndrome and hypogammaglobulinemia and you have those in your book, but the main one here is connecting cystic fibrosis to bronchiectasis. Those are uh, oftentimes seen together, which we talked about. All right, and this describes it a little bit, but you're going to know that the bedside assessment is going to be the findings of obstructive, uh, and we're going to consider bronchiectasis in the uh, obstructive form, and so that's what you're going to find there. Obviously, foul smell like sputum and, uh, is a hallmark of this, and so a bronchiectasis, you're going to see uh, foul smell like sputum, uh, obviously, uh, the patients at risk for pseudomonas, but also uh, a hallmark sign of bronchiectasis, aside from that, is three-layered sputum. Now, they can cough up blood because that's destroying the side of the airway, so they can cough up blood. And you see frank hemoptysis, but think about three, anytime you see three-layered sputum, you're going to think about bronchiectasis. You're going to associate those things. All right, culturing sputum, it talks about some of the organisms that that are found in the sputum of the bronchiectasis patient. Chest assessment, you all can work through that. That's going to be easy to figure out. We're not going to worry about the restri uh, restrictive processes. Pulmonary function tests are going to be obstructive in general. Uh, we've been all through that, so you all, you all should know a decrease FEV1 and FVC is, is obstructive. That's essentially what you're going to need to know for this patient. And then the mild mild, mild and, uh, cases in terms of blood gases is going to be alveolar hyperventilation and respiratory alkalosis, low PO2, so the patient needs oxygen. And then in, in the advanced stages, you're going to see respiratory respiratory failure and chronic the respiratory failure and that kind of thing so that's something you can handle now you, some, of, some of you asked me about this what do these things stand for what you want to realize here is that CVP and RAP are the same these are hemodynamic pressure measurements CVP is central venous pressure and right atrial pressure is the same because they're measured in the same place. It's those synonymous terms. So then you have right ventricular stroke work index and it's basically just suggesting that in cases where there's lung disease, there's, there's the potential to have right heart failure because of the things that we talked about. Now I need for you to kind of, not kind of, I need for you to really have an understanding of the process. Decreased PO2 and increased PaCO2 cause pulmonary vasoconstriction, which increase right ventricular afterload, increases the work on the right side of the heart and eventually can damage the right side of the heart. So the right ventricular stroke work index is gonna increase over time with pulmonary disease. And that's what that's talking about. Obviously, it increase, there's an increase in pulmonary vascular resistance because of pulmonary blood vessels constricting. All right, so what kind of 
tests are we doing? Well, sputum for CNS is a good idea. And then patients with chronic lung disease of any kind can have elevated hemoglobin hematocrit levels. And you know about polycythemia related, or we could call it secondary polycythemia related to uh, pulmonary disorders, especially COPD and the obstructives. All right, bronchography, breathing contrast, you see bronchiectasis, we go back. So just associate the test bronchography or the patient breathing that contrast with bronchiectasis and that's good enough. All right, it says the chest x-rays findings. Don't worry too much about this. If you know obstructive, you'll know this. And then the special procedure bronchogram talks a little bit about what that is, and then CT scan. You need to look in the book and find the CT scan. This says page 213. I'm sure that's not right. Uh, this is the old book that it's referring to. So there is a good picture of a CT scan in the, in the book. Um, and then general management, you know, oxygen therapy, bronchial hygiene therapy. You're going to get bronchodilators, sometimes mechanical ventilation, but oxygen therapy, bronchial hygiene. Now we've made a real kind of an emphasis, we've put a really in, uh, big emphasis on bronchial hygiene. And so, you know, you need to be able to list the, those uh, techniques for bronchial hygiene therapy and, you know, hydrating secretions and, and mobilizing secretions. And that's especially important in patients with cystic fibrosis and bronchiectasis. All right, medications, you all, you know the, you know the story. We're going to have, uh, this is a great patient to give a mucolytic to because they have thick, tenacious mucus. And hang on just a second here. Let me see if I can find that for you. We have thick, tenacious mucus, of course. And that can be troublesome and worrisome and problematic uh, to... Uh, Still stuffed up here. Hang on just a minute. Okay, yeah, here we go. Uh, in your book, if you look on 206, you'll find bronchogram. And uh, 207 is uh, the uh, pictures of um, you know the CT scans of patients with bronchiectasis. And, you know, expect to see those on the test. I'm going to try to put those same uh, pictures on the test. There's a book. It's a good book. All right. So, obviously, we can get bronchodil adrenergic bronchodilators and some of those things. And ant aerosolized antibiotics may be indicated for this patient. That would be it. That would conclude our, our first YouTube video. Thank you very much. Study hard.